Terrific. We're joined here uh, at uh, the first uh, subcommittee meeting for the Economic Development Committee uh, with committee members. I know LeVar Click is there, as well as Jose uh, Delgado. And um, I am joined here uh, in City Hall with Zaida Govan, as well as Kateri Walsh. Uh, we have two quick updates on the Economic Development Committee. Uh, one is a, a, a permit, the other is an historical district uh, designation. Uh, so we're going to start off with uh, the permit for uh, DM Marijuana Dispensary here in Springfield. And um, we are joined here by the petitioner, uh, Ms. Hernandez, as well as her counsel, Mr. Brian Shea. And uh, if you can hear me, uh, Ms. Hernandez, if you'd like just to greet yourself and uh, say hello, introduce well, yourself. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm here. And I see that you are joined by Council, Mr. Shea. Are you there, Mr. Shea? Good morning, uh, uh, Councilor. Thank you for having us this morning. Terrific. Well, I'm told that uh, this is an informational uh, uh, hearing and update on the permit. So, Attorney Shea, why don't you kick it off and give us the, the Council and this committee an update on uh, where you are in the process uh, and to address the Economic Development Committee. Thank you very much. And again, thanks for your time, everybody, this morning. Um, if you're not aware, we were awarded a, um, uh, we were the lucky recipient of a host community agreement at our original location in round two um, of the cannabis licensing in Springfield. And our original location was located at the Eastfield Mall since the revitalization or the um, redevelopment of that particular site, we were requesting that our host community agreement be relocated to 337 East Columbus Avenue, uh, which would be one of the first locations that anyone entering Springfield would see coming off the highway. <clears throat> we began the process of relocating that um, host community agreement to that location in July of 2022. Um, we submitted our request with the information requested by the uh, law department, and uh, we received support by both the Forest Park Civic Association and the South End Civic Association. We met with them, explained what we were going to do. You know, we received unanimous support from both. They seemed very enthusiastic to see that particular piece of property um, get some attention. I mean, again, that is the first piece of property that somebody coming into downtown Springfield would probably see. And it's been vacant for some 15 to 20 years. And it's in dire need of, of some attention. Uh, Attorney Shea, could you give me a little more detail? You get off the ramp coming up uh, 91 North. And it, 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 where exactly is 337? It's where it's, it's before. What's it right next to? So that's the, as you're getting off and you are going past the South End Bridge, it's going to be the first structure on your right. It's, it look, now looks like vacant office space and the abandoned restaurant. Um, oh, it's it's that building the glass with the glass facade with about five or six uh, offices there. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Understood. Um, and so now you, you have you your the petitioner has uh, am I correct a lease there at that? We, no, we have that property under agreement to purchase, and we are just waiting for the relocation of the HCA in order to um, consummate the purchase. We've, so then, if you if you got, if you did get the license uh, to go there in the per the permit, uh, you would then close on that property. Correct. And as part of our application process, we submitted the uh, purchase and sale agreement, slightly redacted, for the review by the city. Okay. And uh, how much have you invested in this process so far? The, the, uh, the petition. It's a tremendous amount of money. We are currently paying uh, a fee to the owner to extend. Our purchase there on, on a recurring basis. We, How much is that? If you can disclose, I don't know if you can, but it, I don't it think was... it would be fair to everybody to do that. Okay, and, yeah. I don't That's... have an issue with disclosing it on behalf of DM, but I'm not sure the owner would appreciate us. No, you don't have to do that then. Yeah. But it, yeah. I can tell you though, it is, it's it's tens of thousands of dollars, and uh, it's recurring uh, on a regular basis, and it's very unfortunate. Again, so we've been into this now for a year and a half. Um, submitted all the information. We were requested to provide a traffic study, which we undertook and completed um, very quickly. And then yeah. after the submission of that, we were requested to do some engineering work, which we did. 
Um, that's been approved by the DPW um, in the fall of last year. Um, and upon completion, we circled back to the law department and said, can you give us a status? And um, at that point, we were communicating with attorney Ken Shea in the law department. And he informed us at that point that it was no longer within his jurisdiction and that he was not um, didn't have anything to do with this. And I asked him if he could just re, uh, uh, you know, reaffirm what he had represented at a prior subcommittee meeting, not yours, but another subcommittee, subcommittee meeting, that this engineering work was the only thing that was required. And he, at that point, indicated um, that he wasn't quite sure. And at the point where he told us that it was just the engineering work that needed to be done, he was only guessing. Um, so I don't know where we are. We've done everything the city has asked. Nobody is responding to us. We have a special permit that's going to be two years old in the fall of this year for that location. Um, and and nobody is offering us any insight as to where we are. I thought it was fair that we report back to your committee, your subcommittee, um, and perhaps request that we get an opportunity to report the same to the full council to let them know that you know, here we were requesting you give us a special permit for a reason we've complied with all of the requirements that were essential in order to get this done. Everything the city said was needed to get this done, even though there doesn't appear to be any regulatory authority to require these types of things for relocation. I don't think those types of scenarios are addressed in the city ordinance. Um, we did it and we spent a great deal of money to do it. And all we're asking for is to give us an opportunity to relocate this license to this location so we can invest about $4 million into revitalizing this particular parcel of land. Um, right now, I mean, this is the one parcel that sits right at the beginning of Springfield. And I don't think anybody is very proud of the way it looks right now. It certainly mm -hmm. should, doesn't reflect what the city has to offer. And just to refresh my memory, we have some new counselors on the line. When, when did the city council approve this permit? I think it was October of 2022. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. And is there a, is is there an expiration date on that permit? How long does the permit yeah. last? Special permits have to be periodically renewed, I yeah. believe. So, and so just okay. Um, and is there any indication? I mean, it, it, if I could just inquire to the council, I mean, if the administration is not inclined, I mean, is that uh, is is that a possibility? I mean, they're not. It doesn't seem like they're if they're not. Uh, they have the option not to sign it. Am I correct on that or not correct? Well, so again, we're not requesting a host community agreement. We already have one. We're requesting to, for it to be relo relocated. And all we have to, to go on is what, what the city did for six bricks. Yeah. And based upon the press releases that came out of this administration, they seem to be very enthusiastic about getting this uh, you know, relocated for six bricks very quickly. And it happened within a very short period of time. We've been at this for a year and a half. I asked attorney Ken Shea who to contact and he's yet to respond to me. I asked him three times over the last couple of months, who do, I, who do you want me to call to get this thing? Who do I call to find out where we are? And I've received no response. Okay, well, council, we appreciate the update and you, we appreciate you walking us through the process to where you are. Uh, in this process, uh, I know we have a petitioner here. I don't know if you want wish to say a few words. You don't have to, but if you if you wish to say a few words, uh, you are addressing the, the, the economic development committee, uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Hernandez. Hernandez, and uh, the floor is yours. Are you on mute? Hi. Hi there. Yes, I wasn't on mute. I'm sorry. Um, basically, my um. Um, my lawyers uh, say everything what I think um, is I feel so you know frustrated because we we try to do everything that they require to us and basically we don't do anything you know nobody say anything no, they don't respond for um, you know so to the nothing to they don't say anything to they don't respond to um anything to we do, you know, and uh we don't see anything um about the the us projects. Um we 
we um, provide everything that they required and, and I don't know now, you know, what else they need to approve my uh, project. It's a lot of money, it's, you know, it's too much time. Um, and I'm so sorry, my English is not really good. So uh, that's why I, I prefer my lawyer talk about uh, for me, but um, I just want to answer, you know? So everything's on the table right now. Well, thank you for that testimony. And um, I know you wanted a staff, I know you wanted to inform the committee of the status of the, the application and uh, the permit. And uh, we appreciate your input. Uh, I see other counselors on the line, LeVar, and I see uh, Jose. If I don't know if you guys have questions for the, the uh, attorney or the petitioner, but if you if you do. Um, yeah, thank thank you, Chair. Um, it's really more so of a comment um, in or, or, or direction, I should say. Uh, so Attorney Shea, thank you for the uh, update. Um, to me, this is uh, disappointing. Um, uh, at the very least, uh, for me, uh, a response needs to happen uh, either either way. If we're having uh, someone looking to invest into our city, uh, doing all the work that they're asked to do and sending emails and whatever it is, and then no response, that's a problem for me. Um, so we, as, as this body, we have to uh, we request some answers because they're coming to us for help. So through the chair, um, I guess I'm asking you for direction on the next steps to help this petitioner. Thank you. Certainly. Well, I, the next step would be uh, simply to report uh, this committee hearing and testimony to the full council. That would be our next step uh, in the matter. Uh, I, we have uh, City Councilor Delgado, Jose. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and. What I would say is I, I agree with my colleague, uh, Councilor Cook Bruce. I mean, the fact that this this petitioner already has a hosted community agreement. I mean, she's done all the steps that she, you know, needs to do to get to this point. And it's a simple, well, simple or not simple address change, but there is precedence already set uh, from the example that Attorney Shea set. So I don't understand what what the issue is now. On top of that, she's got support from the neighborhood councils and and it seems like this piece of property I've driven by this area multiple times it's it's dark it's black and it's you know obviously a part of the city we want to make sure we bring back to life and 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 get some more you know more property taxes and more taxes on the tax roll. I mean isn't that the whole point of of what we're trying to do here so um so I would you know I would definitely agree with you know having this go to the full council but also at the same time as Councilor Cook Bruce said, getting getting some answers like, you know, what are we doing here? I mean, we want to be a, a city that's business friendly, so I don't understand what's going on. Uh, we have Councilor uh, Govan here in City Council Chambers. Councilor Govan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I remember, oh, was it last year, Mr. Shea, the, Attorney Shea, that um, we met and we agreed that this was a great idea and that we needed for this to move forward. Um, I guess I guess my question would be like um, Councillor Cliff Bruce said and, and Councillor Delgado, what do we need to do to, to ensure that this happens? Is there anything that we can do besides bringing it to the full council body? Because I know that we don't have necessarily authority to say, okay, do it, but who do we need to talk to and what do we need to do? Do you know? <laughs> well, I think that this, our our purview would be to report it to the full council right. body. And at that point, uh, you can figure out what we you, need to do then. Because mm. I think I agree with uh, Attorney Shea and with Ms. Hernandez that um, they've been waiting for a very long time. I know that they're spending money on a regular basis. When I met with them last year, I or the year before, actually, um, they might have invested at least a million dollars into what has been happening. So I can't even imagine how much they've spent now. Um, and, and it's just not a good look for, for our city. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We have uh, Councilor Walsh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanna start out by saying I am 100% in favor of this proposal. 
as are the residents of Forest Park and the Civic Association. Mm -hmm. And I would go so far to say it is disgraceful the way this petitioner has been treated. Mm -hmm. We have the op opportunity to be the, to have the first female Hispanic owner in the state, besides everything else, all the other boxes that she, she checks. And besides bringing this to the full council, I think we need to know why are there so many roadblocks to a um, proposal that is supported by the neighborhood, the Civic Association, they've gone through all these hoops. No one else has gone through these hoops. We've got to find out why they're doing this. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to have the full support of the council. Thank you, uh, Councillor Walsh. Uh, there are no further comments. Uh, we appreciate the update on the status of your permit, and we appreciate you taking time to uh, update the committee and we will uh, provide a full report to the city council at our next city council meeting Do we have and if i may that? um mr chair i just i i want to personally apologize to the petitioner and um to attorney shea for what's what's going on i don't know what it is but like um council wash said you know this is it is disgraceful and and i'm just really sorry that it has come to this point but i'm hoping and i'm praying that you know it will be resolved in the affirmative pretty soon. And I think Councilor Govan and I pro pro probably are not appreciative that a female owner is being put through so many homes. Thank you. And uh, we will, uh, oh, Attorney Shang, do you have a oh, comment? Thank you very much. Yeah, I just wanted to mention, so myself and the petitioner would be more than happy to appear at a council meeting if there was a, a hearing available that we could appear to answer any questions that other counselors may have um if you wanted to schedule something uh before the Usually, council uh the custom is to give a, a report at the next uh council meeting uh i don't know when that would be probably uh, next month well february uh, uh the next two weeks um uh, but okay. keep an eye on the municipal calendar it'll be a okay. public posted meeting and uh, i believe it's the 12th february 12th so uh we will report at the beginning of that council meeting and uh as uh, the petitioner, you're certainly welcome to uh, show up and uh, address the council at that time. Okay. And, and on behalf of the petitioner, I thank you for your time and I thank you for your support too. Um, we are undeterred in getting this completed. And I, I think, um, I, again, without your support, I think it would be just hard, much, much harder. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Now, I, thank you. Uh, now on to the second matter in the hearing is the isolation hospital uh, matter. Uh, the isolation hospital uh, was uh, voted by the city council to have an historic district. If uh, we have Erica Swallow on the line and, and Alvin, is it Alvin, at, mm -hmm. uh, as Alvin well? Alvin, yeah. Al Alvin Allen and uh, and we also have a third uh, supporter of this initiative, and I don't have his name on uh, Bob McCarroll. Oh, Bob McCarroll. I don't know who that is. And a, and a four. But why don't we start with Erica Swallow. If you can, Erica, give us the, the committee just a brief update of where we were, where we are, and where we're going. Yes, I, uh, Erica Swallow, president of the Springfield Preservation Trust. I think Alvin will end up being the one to give the big update here, but as an advocate for the Isolation Hospital Local Historic District. Um, we were involved with uh, putting together the original report and uh, for its uh, significance. And uh, that process went from the end of 2022 all the way through to last year in October when it came to city council for a final second vote to make it a local historic district. At that committee, attorney Ken Shea um, expressed um, a lot of concern regarding uh, legal issues he was bringing up uh, and risks the city should take. So city council, um, actually it was, sorry, it might've been the meeting right before that. Um, city council ended up sending this to the economic Deve Deve development committee um, to go over this. You all de delved into, uh, I believe it was potentially two meetings, but it was definitely at least one meeting, um, do dove into with the attorney from Vibra Hospital um, what were the concerns here? Um, the, the, the original owner, the, the owners themselves never, um, came to, 
uh, any meetings at all. So it became a situation where the city was representing the owners quite a bit in all of these meetings. And then it came out in press that the city actually is aiming to buy it for, I believe, a dollar. Um, and so the city eventually, they, they have not taken ownership at this point. So it's still owned by Vibra Hospital from what I see. I don't know what the timing is, is on that. But alas, um, we believe, you know, this is all getting very held up from what we're seeing on October 16th of last year, city council ordered the Springfield Historical Commission to redo the report, given that the um, legal department was concerned with the methodology for which the report was put together. They felt that only Springfield, they're interpreting chapter 40 C um, of Massachusetts general law to state that the Springfield Historical Commission itself needs to do the report or they appoint someone and they had appointed the Springfield Preservation Trust to do that re the original report but Ken Shea was and the legal department were saying this seems too much con we're concerned because the historical uh that Springfield Preservation Trust actually has they advocate actively as a nonprofit in the community we don't think they're an appropriate um group to run this. So that's what had transpired and why city council voted to order the historical commission to redo the report. Um, we have spoken with, uh, through our, our team, Kira Holmes, um, who's on the call, had spoken with Alvin Allen who to give an update. And our understanding is that the historical commission has appointed the Office of Planning and Economic Development to the, do the report, but that um, o OPED has not started the report for whatever reason. So I look forward to hearing maybe from Alvin on why they haven't started the report after many months. This is um, concerning because this, I believe, I'm, I still would need clarification on the way these um, steps work, the processes, but I we believe that the to, if with an order, we think that this is still in committee, and it's our concern that this is going to die in committee after the 120 day mark, which would be February 13th. And mm -hmm. we believe that a next step would be if uh, we need to understand what is OPED doing at this was an order from city council, so it should you know, have some progress. And if it doesn't, that's a problem. Um, but even more so, we should keep this item, um, this ordinance change for the local historic districts, the original item, alive in committee um, to make sure that if OPED doesn't end up doing this report, that the city council at least has the opportunity to vote, to consider a revote, final vote on the original um original local historic district ordinance change, um, which really was on its very last leg when it, it could have became a local historic district last October 16th on that final vote, but instead it got kicked back over to the to do a second full report, which has made no progress. So that's where we are. And I will um, also state that the um, we're concerned about this Property because there have been reports of people entering the property. There is a group called Urban Adventurers that has been bragging online about entering the property. They are a benign group who is who are like they like abandoned buildings and whatnot, but they have been um, actively entering the property. It's apparently in some degree unsecured. And if they're able to be enter the property, then other less benign trespassers could also be entering the property. This is particularly concerning because a number of city-owned properties, the Chestnut Junior High School, the MCDI building, all were demolished because of being unsecured, burning down. And this week we have 174 Maple Street, which um, just experienced a fire. We're not sure what the cause of that fire was, but this is another city-owned property that's a historic treasure for Springfield that we feel is being improperly maintained and potentially not being secured. Um, these are assets to our city. And just as we're talking about the last building in this meeting, when you don't secure them and properly take care of them or allow for redevelopment or make proper steps to um, do it yourself or put RFPs out there, then this is what happens and our assets um, end up, you know, being destroyed. Um, so we're this, we are the city of homes. We're a, a city that prides itself on historic properties. And we're looking for an update on the isolation hospital, local historic district redo report. It has any progress ma been made on that. And uh, look, just a couple of things. So you make a great point on securing buildings in general. That you, you are right. Mm -hmm. That uh, Maple Street uh, mm -hmm. fire is a tragedy. That's a, that's a nice uh, property over there. And we'd like to uh, 
keep that going. Uh, Alvin, if, you, if, you, if you'd like to jump in and, and, and provide your insight and, and brief to, to the committee, uh, uh, feel free to do so if, if you want to uh, dovetail onto those comments. Hi, good morning, counselors, uh, and good, good morning, Ms. Swallow. Um, so from my understanding, again, the, um, the process of the moving forward with the, the sorry, <laughs> the historic district was, um, it was not ordered by the city council, but referred back to the Springfield Historical Commission. Uh, we've had, when I say we, uh, my department, uh, and as well as um, un under the um, discretion of our chief development officer, Tim Sheehan, have spoken with um, the commission chairman, uh, Vincent Walsh, uh, and requested, you know, that the commission move this matter forward. Uh, but prior to doing so, um, our chief, of, under the discretion of our chief of development officer, uh, Tim Sheehan, and, uh, as well as our counsel, Ken Shea, have advocated that we create new uh, protocols um, or, or, or criteria for uh, creating new districts. Um, so essentially that's where we are. We're um, um, trying to create uh, these new protocols, but uh, obviously with the, the planning department is currently uh, understaffed and, 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 and being so, um, you know, I've been working with my director, Phil Dromey, and we've, again, we've been trying to come up with criteria and, just due to the fact that you know uh, of us being short staffed, we, uh, my director has advocated that we put it out for RFP for a consultant to assist us with putting together new criteria, and so that's where we are uh, currently in the process. And, and just to be clear, just so that you, it, it's exact. Where exactly is the petition right now? That it, uh, it's 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 on the the agenda. That it could be placed on the. It, it, what, Ms. Swallow, uh, if you could just clarify that for the committee, what it's 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 what committee is it in? It's in the it's, so this um is in the economic it was in yeah. the economic development committee yeah. when the order was it was sent back to city council and voted yeah. um, at that point. And I do have a copy of the order here. If um, the planning department doesn't have a copy of it, um, it, which it does say, it's an order requesting the Springfield City Historic Commission undertake an independent study for the creation of a historic district. So it wasn't a referral, it was an order. And I will note that Tim Sheehan in that final economic development committee said they had finances, and this is recorded on our municipal meetings YouTube page, if you wanna go check it out. He said and stated multiple times um, that there is budget item. There is, a, they have budget for this. And I know that multiple of the counselors here were in that meeting where he stated multiple times, there is a budget for this. We have, we have it covered. We're A-OK -okay to go. So mm -hmm. that now that we're being told it's understaffed is a big change of the narrative here. And that oh. you're changing all of the rules of how you do a local historic district. Now, with all due respect, this is Phil Drummond from the Office of Planning and Economic Development. I, you know, I, 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 again, with all due respect, we're, we're not changing the rules where the, under the order or, or referral back to the city council, we are certainly willing to move forward with this. What was brought up and made very clear when this went through the first time around is there's some ambiguities with regards to how the commission moves forward with processing local historic districts. And what, what the chief development's concern are is there should be some clear guidelines, procedures, and policies on how that is created. No one's looking at changing the rules. What we're trying to do is review ordinances that are over 50 years old and make sure that the process in which they are done is completed in a way that is fair to the property owner as well as to who's petitioning. We have no issue with moving forward with this and the order did not provide a timeline. We have the funding to do this and will take this place. But again, in conversations with multiple departments, there seemed to be some need for better policies and procedures on how this moves forward. That's simply what we're looking to do. Okay. Thank you. Is Phil, is Phil still there? Mm -hmm. I'm here. Hey, I'm here. Phil, can, can you just uh, enlighten me? I mean, where where exactly is it? That's what I'm trying to find. It's not. It's not. On the council agenda, where it's well, I mean, as, as far as I'm aware, and I, as far yeah. as I'm aware, and I, I, I'm certainly going to defer to the law department with the city council. I believe once the order or referral was done, it was off the agenda of the council. I'm not a, 
if it's still on, great. I, I just, I think once that vote was taken and the referral was referred back to the commission, the process then needed to start again. Now, the, the, the discussion was who does the report moving forward, and that's where we are. But I, but I don't believe it's still in committee, but I, I defer to law on that. So, so you, it's it's your opinion that it's at it's in the historical commission right now. Is it my? Well, opinion? it's it's it has not been formally put on the agenda. No. Yeah. Okay. Un understood. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. And just just to let you know, we we we're certainly aware of the of the issues with the uh, uh, the 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 people getting into the building. You know, uh, the, the, as as was noted earlier, the city is in the process, or I shouldn't say the city. The Springfield Redevelopment Authority is in the process of purchasing the building. They are aware, I guess, these these folks post online that they're inside these buildings. So we certainly are aware of it. And we're doing everything we can to make sure this building is secure. Um, even the Maple Streets were secured, but unfortunately, people do get in. So we're working hard to make sure this building is, is, is fully uh, secured to keep people out and to, to make sure it's protected. So I have a question. Thank you. I think uh, Kateri has a question. Kateri, if you want to uh, yeah. Thank you, through the Chair. So I thought one of the issues with this was with the difficulties with the owner. Is that true or not? Well, but that, I mean, I think that kind of goes away with the with the with the Springfield Redevelopment Authority purchasing the property. Obviously, the original owner was not in favor of the of the creation of the district. I, I agree that they didn't. They kind of showed up late in the game, but um, uh, but. Again, with with the city moving forward, or again the Springfield redevelopment moving forward with the purchase of the property, I, I think the 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 issues with ownership kind of don't disappear. But it, it's well, it's I not the same owner that went through it the first time. I thought the delay was that. Don't you remember the owner threatened some legal action? Was it? Isn't that part of this? Well, that was part of the reason why I think this. The city council referred it back to the historical commission with regards to the creation of the report. There was there was question about who had done the report and whether it was done correctly. And through those conversations, it was determined that we we should be taking a broader look on these policies and procedures and how we move forward with with these to make sure they're being done correctly. And again, whatever whatever ultimately ends up, this will be fully discussed in public. It'll be a, you know, this is not something we're doing behind the scenes to change any type of rules. We're just, we're just trying to make sure there's, there's policies and procedures in place. But, but new criteria, new role, new rules, that wouldn't impact uh, uh, projects that are already happened or projects that are ongoing. No, no, no. And again, I'm not, I'm not sure. That, I mean, we're looking at the ordinance as well. So any changes to the ordinance will only come back would ultimately come back to the city council as well, as well for a vote. Any change in an ordinance has to has to get city council approval as well. And again, I think I, I just think we're, we're we just want to solidify some of the policies and procedures. That's that's what we're looking to do. And but again, it's it, this is going to be a fully open process. The the commission will be obviously the historical commission will certainly be involved. But but there were concerns raised in the first time around, and we're when we're trying to address those. It's it's you know I I can certainly agree that it's it's. You know, as with anything government, it's it's not the quickest process, but we're doing our best to, to get it completed. And and again, I think the, the issues of, of the building being demolished by the previous owners, I think, are off the table because that's not going to move forward. And and the building is also protected through the demo delay ordinance. So if someone were to jump in here and buy it and run to the building department, no building permit for demolition would be issued. So I think there there are protections in place. And, and we're working as quickly as we can to, to try and get these procedures completed. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Um, I also see Bob McCarroll's on the line. Bob, 